Many wealthy and uh, not so wealthy countries have affordable and decent health care comparable to Medicare for all and free or low cost college tuition. Though one could cherry pick for health care horror stories, this is irrefutable. Some of the current Democratic candidates endorse similar health and higher education plans. As they explain them, these plans seem doable, and you appear to endorse the goals. Please state the reasons, ideological, logistical, or otherwise, why you won't fully support trying to achieve them. Good question. First and foremost thing we must do in public life is be honest with the public. Bernie's been honest. This is going to cost between 30 and $40 trillion over 10 years. The entire federal budget on a yearly basis is less than it will cost on a yearly basis to provide for Medicare for all, number one. Number two, it in fact, in my view, they all acknowledge that support it. It will take somewhere between four and 10 years for it to come into being. People can't wait. I believe the plan I proposed which is building on Obamacare and providing a public option that is available for anyone, significantly reducing the cost of getting into the exchanges. My plan costs $750 billion. Would immediately cover everybody, everybody in America, allow you to keep your private plan if you wanted it, if you wanted it. The thing that Bernie's plan does is that you either have to have uh, his plan or no plan, period, nothing. You cannot choose. A lot of these people have gone out and they've negotiated with their employers a significant health care plan that they've given up salaries for. They've given up part of their, their, their income for, and they like it. They should be entitled to choose to keep it if they wish. If they don't wish to keep it, they can buy into the public option that I propose. And it's affordable. And it can happen immediately, immediately. I can get it passed. And if you take a look, Excuse me. If you take a look, the vast majority of the people who you have to go into the Congress and pay, you have to get things done. It matters that you can actually deliver on what you say. For example, I think we should have free community college, cutting in half the cost of a, a, a college education. Everything below from high school to two years of community college should be free, including trade school. We can afford to do that quickly, and we can get it done. I believe we can forgive a significant portion of the student debt by reducing from 10% 10, 10 to 5% the payback rate now. And in addition to that, if you engage in public service, you in fact can have $10,000 a year debt removed from taken off the books and for five years. The average indebtedness is about $38,000. We can do that. But to come along and say you're going to find, you're going to fund, a 35, 34, $40 trillion plan in 10 years, $1.7 trillion in student debt will be forgiven for all universities. I can understand, I think we can get to the point we can have four-year public universities covered. But why should, in fact, these people out here pay for the fact that my kids had a significant debt, but they went to Yale and they went to Penn and they went for incredibly high tuitions? Why should that be free? So there has to be some correlation between you being able to do what you say and level with the American people. Healthcare is the single most important thing you all face. And what, what, I mean, don't you think you're entitled to know whether or not your taxes are gonna go up higher than the benefits you will get, significantly higher? That's what almost every single study professor you know says. You know it says that. And so how do you explain that? Well, you should stand up and do at least what Bernie did and said, yep, it's going to cost 7.5% more in your withholding tax, meaning your pay will be deducted another 7.5%, and on top of that, a 4 to 5% tax increase. Well, that makes sense. He's, he, but that only gets you halfway there. So there's a little bit of truth in lending here. Well, Senator Warren, of course, has said that she's not going to be raising those taxes, as you know, right? She has a different plan. You talked about her support for Medicare for all last week. Um, you attacked her. I think it's a fair word. Your, the quote was from you, it's just an elitist attitude about you're either my way or the highway. Let's get what something straight. She attacked me. She went out and said 
Biden, she didn't use my name anymore than I used her. She said, Biden is a coward. Biden, Biden is in fact in the pocket of. Biden is, and she went down the list of saying that I, I should be in a Republican primary. She did say you were in the wrong primary. Oh yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Now what do you call that? And what do you call that? So I responded by saying, no, no, here's what I said. It's not about her. It's about the attitude that exists right now. If you disagree with me, you must be bad. There must be, there, you, they question motive. Look, we can disagree. I respect her view. I really do. What I was talking about is you go home and you tell everybody people are busting their neck at the kitchen table conversations going on tomorrow morning, like in the house I was raised in, and you say, by the way, I know you don't think we should raise your taxes on this, but this is good for you. This is good for you. What do you mean? But Where did that come from? What specifically is elitist about how she's pursuing Medicare for all? No, the attitude that we know better than ordinary people what's in their interest. I know more than you. Let me tell you what to do. <laughs> I know it, and it wasn't she's elitist. The attitude is elitist, that people can't make up their own minds. You like your health insurance, but you shouldn't like your health insurance. You should have to give that up. I'm going to demand you not have that. We're going to give you something better. I like, I'm, I know what I want. So that is an attitude that says, OK, you're telling me it's my way or the highway. And it's not about her. It's about the attitude out there, the attitude that we know best. You do it my way. Where I come from, growing up in a middle class neighborhood, the last thing I liked is people telling my family and me what we should know, what we should believe, as if somehow we weren't informed, that we just because we didn't have money, we weren't knowledgeable. I resent that. And I wasn't talking about her, I was talking about the attitude that if you don't agree with me, get in the other party. I'm more of a Democrat from my shoe sole to my ears than about anybody running in this party, okay? Including her? Inc <laughs> including everybody, okay? One thing I've never had to wonder about is what I believed and where my, ideolo my ideology was and where I come from and why I'm in this and why I'm fighting. It's because of the people like I grew up with, many of whom, in fact, didn't have college degrees, many of whom, most of the people I grew up with, their parents never went to college. Most of my generation were the first in our families to go to college. But they were as smart, as decent, as honorable, and as committed as anybody else. But they get left behind. That's one of the reasons why I feel so strongly about the need to make, have more power in unions. People don't, they don't respect anything until you stand up and say, this is what I want. This is what I believe. 